So please tell us your name and where are you from? Uh, I'm Samuel Manzo and I'm born and raised here in Pasco, Washington. And Sam, can you tell us how you stumble upon coming to this church? Uh, I first started coming uh, about a month ago and uh, it was all because of David. I was at the gym and uh, uh, he just came up to me and he, uh, he just started talking to me. I, had, um, I was friends with him since high school, so uh, I had seen that he went to Africa, so I asked him what was all about, that about and uh, he told me pretty much his testimony, which was crazy to me because I grew up with him and I knew him and that wasn't David at all. And, uh, when he told me he was coming to church, I was just amazed by that, and I wanted to come with it, come too. And uh, he he told me to come to Wednesdays, and I did, and uh, I fell in love ever since. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit how was your life like before um, you came to church and gave your life to Christ? Um, before I before I started coming to church, I was in a very dark place. I I was addicted to marijuana since I was 16. Um, I got introduced to a lot of other drugs, um, ecstasy, cocaine, Molly. Uh, around the age of 20, um, and that was a very uh, dark time for me. Uh, one time, I, uh, a coworker had given me a drug for my 21st birthday, and that was ecstasy, and uh, I had already messed with it before, so I knew what it was about. He told me to be careful with it. Um, I just didn't pay attention to that. I went ahead and just took it. Uh, with, um, I took it, and... Um, after about 15 minutes, the effects started hitting me, which it shouldn't have, you know, it should have took at least an hour. Um, I kind of started figuring maybe something's wrong. Um, buddies of mine called me to pick them up from the bar, so I did. And then uh, after that, they told me, do you want to go home, maybe smoke some weed and stuff? And I told them, no, I, I, I'm, I'm just not feeling right. So uh, I just went home by myself. And after that, as um, soon as I got into my room, I knew something was terribly wrong. I... Uh, I woke up like five minutes later, I think, uh, and it was, uh, I, I was on the floor of my room, just um, my heart racing a million miles an hour. I thought, uh, I thought I was really gonna die that night. Uh, it was just a scary feeling, and all I can think about was, um, how, um, how was I gonna tell my mom that night that I had uh, overdosed on ecstasy, a drug she had warned me about so many times and uh, I was just very scared. For six hours, I laid on that floor, pouring out sweat, uh, not knowing what to do. Uh, so I just laid there, praying to God, please, this can't be it. I know, I know this is not the way I'm supposed to go out. And uh, a couple hours later, six hours later, uh, one of my buddies came and uh, he found me. And he asked me what's wrong, and I told him I have no clue. I, I think I'm dying. You know, and he kind of cared for me a little bit, just kind of, just kind of took care of me and brought me back to my feet. And uh, after that, uh, we just we did more drugs, which was not a good idea. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and um, that was just a very dark time. After that, after that, it was just that totally scared me to death. I thought I was going to die that night, so I I never went back to those drugs. Those drugs were absolutely done. But I felt so uh, so empty inside. I. I kept smoking. I kept smoking for two more years, and then um, that, that was just that right there. Okay, Sammy, can you tell us when was the wake-up call and your turning point? Um, my wake-up call was uh, two different times. One time, uh, I've grown up knowing my dad is the biggest alcoholic I've ever known, and uh, we were always scared of him. It was terrifying, and um, he started going to church for a while, and I just... In my mind, I was like, he's not serious about it. He's just going to come home drunk, and we're still going to be scared of him. Um, one time, we were at a, a, at a wedding with his best friend. It was his best friend's wedding, uh, all this stuff. And then um, he had asked him, do you want a drink? And my dad declined a beer. And I was just like, wow, he's, he's absolutely serious about this. you know." So that was point one. Another point, which was around about a month ago when I had started coming, my mom I noticed my mom was, she was just really sad. I could tell she was really tired, and I asked her mom what's wrong. And she told me, um, I've been praying for you a lot. I've, I've been losing a lot of sleep for you. And uh, I, just, I just snapped at her, and I, I told her, I was like, why do, you, why do you do this? You know that I'm never gonna stop smoking. I'm, this is, I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. And uh, her expression on her face that day, it just, it really sunk deep, and uh, I don't know, I just, I just knew I had to change, and this, that wasn't the life that I wanted for myself. So uh, I think David coming to me and talking to me, that I think I know that was a blessing. Amen.
So now that you have given your life to Christ, what is your life like now? Now that I have given my life to Christ, it is amazing. I have, um, I've gotten baptized since then. Uh, I've come to church as much as I can. I've, I, I'm more than excited. Uh, when I would, I'd just come home back then and just go straight to my room, smoke, not even acknowledge my parents. Now I get home and I have amazing, amazing talks with my parents, which I've never had that relationship with them. I talk about them with the Bible, I'm, how I'm going to come here. My, my testimony is I'm just so excited. I, I just can't believe how much my life has changed since I've accepted God into my life. Amen. So we have a picture for you that you posted on Facebook, kind of went a little bit vital. We want to, can you explain what happened there? Uh, this was uh, about two weeks ago, and I, it was actually after church, and um, I was sitting there. I was, I was pretty upset myself because I wanted to smoke, and I was like, I can't be smoking and going to church. I felt like I was on the right track, and without thinking, I just got up, and I threw everything away, and that was it. And since two weeks ago today, I am two weeks free of uh, everything. <laughs> I want to ask you, how long has your mom been praying for you? Uh, my mom, I, I would have to say as long as she's known that I've been smoking, which is six to seven years, and um, she hasn't stopped since. And like I said, that day that she told me that, it just sunk deep into me. And I know now that she sees me coming to church and she sees me as happy as I am, she, she tells me I'm a different person. And I've never heard that from my mom. She's, she's smiling all the time, and it's just great. Amen. So now as a follower of Christ, what are your goals and your desires? Uh, my goals and desires are hopefully, um, when I had posted that picture, uh, one of my friends had commented on it. He said, um, we, we were just talking about maybe three weeks ago how we were going to get together and we are going to smoke and you know hang out and whatever. whatever. And uh, he had posted, he, he's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm really glad you did this. You know, it kind of encouraged me to put everything down. And I just know that I'm not only going to better myself, but I know I'm going to better people around me. And that's exactly what I want. So tonight, what is your advice for people maybe in the same place that you were three weeks ago? Or um, to those moms that are praying for their sons that, like you were? Uh, for the parents, uh, just never give up. Never give up hope. Uh, I was as down as I can get, and I, I, I told my mom, I'm never going to stop, and she never stopped praying, and now that I know she sees me how I am, I, like I said, I've never seen her happier for me, and it, it's just amazing, and for everyone who's in the same slums as me, it's not going to last forever, it's, trust me, it's a phase, you will get through it, just keep